Two years ago, we investigated a rash of apparent UFO sightings which took place in Gulf Breeze, Florida between November of 1987 and May of 1988. Remarkably, one local resident managed to take 38 photographs of what appeared to be a flying saucer. At the time, the photographer of the UFO was requested strict anonymity. Since then, he has gone public with a book about his experiences. Charlie, I don't know if I can get that expanded out there like that or not. This is just running way over on the square footage. His name is Ed Walters, well, a building contractor and developer who has lived in Gulf Breeze with his wife and two children for nearly 10 years. Okay. Well, look, let me try that and I'll get back to you. This is a very conservative um, town. I'm a very conservative guy and I was always thought that UFOs were something that people saw that were not quite all there. And suddenly having to deal with the reality that I did see something was absolutely mind blowing. But I didn't want to be known as the builder who saw UFOs. Naturally, the authenticity of these remarkable photographs was questioned. Since no one had actually seen Ed taking the pictures, there was a strong possibility that they had been hoaxed. But during the seven month period that these photographs were taken, no less than 100 citizens in the area claim they saw the same object seen in the pictures. I don't know what it was. Um, I know it was something I've never seen before. The, the object was very large. I would say the size of a, of a, a medium size, a large airplane. We could see the light and see the portholes and see that there was like a little lighted dome on the top. Recent events in Gulf Breeze have put the debate back in the news. Dramatic new evidence has appeared which suggests that Ed Walters did hoax his photographs. Ed Walters is extremely intelligent, smarter than I am, I'm sure. And he's managed to create a story and keep the story fed and keep it going for years now. I haven't heard any evidence, uh, say nothing about proof, uh, to really suggest that the photographs are hoaxes. There's more which points to it as a hoax than, than the truth. There is very little evidence that Ed hoaxed these pictures. Ed will never, ever admit to it being a fraud, even if it goes to court, even if he goes to jail. It, no matter what happens, he'll never admit that it's fraud. The Gulf Breeze UFO sightings have become a fulcrum of controversy. If Ed Walters is telling the truth, then he's managed to obtain evidence that UFOs do exist. If he's fabricating his story and his pictures, then he may be an opportunistic liar who has not only brilliantly deceived the media, but his neighbors and friends as well. Recently, a bizarre chain of events has occurred that supports both conclusions. Just a curiosity that it was... I didn't look at the detail of workmen. found anything in the house when we moved in that would indicate any activity having to do with UFOs. Nothing unusual in Whether we had found any photographs or anything that might be associated with UFOs. Quite some time before we moved in. But perhaps maybe a model of a UFO? Well, yeah, there was a model. Um, and I, at that time, didn't see any reason why he shouldn't, so we let him do that. The following week, the story of the model's discovery threw Gulf Breeze into an uproar. Once more, the cry of hoax reverberated through the town. This model is a total fabrication, a prank done by somebody unknown to, in an effort to discredit me and also in an effort to discredit the Gulf Breeze sightings in general. The Pensacola paper showed how the model could have been used in a hoax. This is a picture the paper took using the model. This is one of Ed's original photographs. 
I think the model that was found closely resembles many of Ed Walter's pictures. It doesn't exactly match, but it's very close. And perhaps there is another model or a variation of that paper plate model that is actually the one that appears in the pictures, if this is a hoax. The model is nine inches across and six inches high. The black portholes are drawn on a strip of drafting paper, which has been cut from one of Ed Walter's discarded house designs. After a little bit of research, we discovered that this plan this, that makes the center part of this model was designed on September the 7th, 1989, two years removed from when I took the photographs of the object in the sky in 1987. The finding of a model is of no consequence to our sighting uh, because what we saw was not a model. The truth is that I know that what I saw could not have been a small model dangled in the sky uh, made out of paper plates that just is not possible. The photographs of Ed Walters are a hoax, were created for the purpose of starting the UFO as a topic of interest and ultimately became a way for him to make a great deal of money off of a publication as well as anything else that may follow from it. The discovery of this model made skeptics out of people who so far had been willing to take Ed's word, but others in Gulf Breeze believed Ed implicitly. Last January, Ed Walters saw and photographed yet another UFO, and this time, he was not alone. January 8th was a normal night, it was a lovely night. Francis and I went out for our evening walk, and as I walked down the road, I cast my uh, head over and, and talking to my wife and uh, and I saw the red object in the sky Look honey, there it is. It's back and I uh, knew right away that I was looking at the UFO It was high in the sky and it was Relatively bright brighter when I first saw it than when we saw it later I had been criticized in the past for not calling quickly when I saw the UFO and so I Francis and I ran back to the house. I got on the phone and began calling investigators. Ended up getting three answering machines in a row. I, in a row. I finally called uh, quickly Dwayne Cook, got him, said, look, uh, there's this thing that's about a block away from the house and uh, um, very high in the sky, but very clear, come quick. Moments later, Ed was joined by Brenda and Buddy Pollock, Dwayne and Doree Cook, and Doree's son, Chip Holstein. All right, all right. As we pulled up, he was just setting up the camera in the street. At first, we didn't see anything, and Ed was distraught. You don't see it? You don't see it? I'm looking at it. After we watched for a while, we did, in fact, see a red glowing spot up there. It, uh, I was a bit disappointed uh, right up front because I was expecting when he said a big glowing object to see something like this, and when in fact it was really more something like this. Right there, buddy. Keep watching. Right there. I was trying to take photographs of it, but with this 200 and something millimeter lens, it was very difficult. It was moving around and I was trying to follow it and it was really hard. Uh, I managed to take a couple of shots. A more distinct picture was taken by Chip Holston. When I took the picture, I was looking through Ed's camera. You could see it so much better through the camera. It was really amazing. Definitely, I've never seen anything like that before. It wasn't like a helicopter or airplane that, you know, like an airplane's always moving, and a helicopter is just kind of sitting there hovering around. And this was different, like it was floating or something. It was really weird. This is the photograph taken by Chip. Perhaps the most remarkable photo taken that night was snapped by Brenda Pollock using the camera she had brought with her. Soon the light went out. And at that point, when it was in the, the black phase, I did get to take a picture because it stayed still long enough for me to be able to get off a shot. None of the witnesses had seen what appeared in Brenda's photo with a naked eye. By the time Brenda took this photograph, the light had gone out. 
She used a time exposure and handheld the camera, which may account for the streak, even though the object was not lit up at the time. Amazingly, photographic experts are able to count 110 different color changes in Brenda's three-second exposure. It was unusual in that it did not have sharply defined edges like the light on an airplane or the light at the top of our water tank here in Gulf Breeze. It was more like fuzzy or irregular edges and behind the red you could see a round silhouette of an object that, or a craft of some kind that was unlit. The pictures taken on January 8th are markedly different from earlier UFO photographs. Ed Walters believes the distance and movement of the object that night are what accounts for this. To many, the presence of five witnesses bolstered Ed's claim that his earlier photos were real. It was only the second time anyone other than an immediate family member had seen him photograph a UFO. It was wonderful to be with a crowd of people and stand there and watch this object because it's no longer that you're on your own. The January 8th UFO sighting seemed to strengthen Ed's case that his photographs were no hoaxes. But then the UFO model hit the front pages, and one week later Ed suffered another devastating setback. A young Gulf Breeze resident came forward and claimed that two and a half years earlier he had helped Ed Walters to hoax UFO photographs. This surprise witness was 20-year-old Tommy Smith, and as his story unfolded, people in Gulf Breeze didn't know who or what to believe. In an effort to verify Tommy's account, we had him walk through the procedure. In the local newscast, Tommy Smith demonstrated how Ed Walters managed to hoax the pictures by using a model. It had the, uh, like I said, the tripod down below with the actual flashlight taped to it. It's when the flashlights with the red buttons the snap on and off and pipe on top, piece of tape around it, and everything was black. According to Tommy, in January of 1988, Ed gave him these six pictures and told him to take them to the local papers. Two main reasons why I didn't go through with it was because I was lying to my folks, basically, and also the fact that uh, I just felt like it was fraud. For two years, Tommy kept his knowledge secret from everyone except his parents. But after the discovery of the model, he decided to go public. Today it is Tommy's word against Ed's, and nobody knows who is telling the truth. He had a spot on the floor where he could basically kneel or sit and photograph the model every single time. The thing that impressed me most about Tommy was first his sincerity. He seemed very honest, very forthright. Um, I was sitting in the bedroom and he went into the closet and pulled one model out and said, no, wrong one, stuck it back up and pulled another one out. Tommy's statements don't check out. No matter how nicely he says them and how sincerely he says them, they don't check out. Very simply, Tommy has no axe to grind in this. Tommy has nothing to gain by coming forward and offering the details of the story that he knows. I remember that the model had, it was a set of two, two sets of plates with a strip of paper around the middle. I have been studied for two and a half years. Every word that I have uttered has been examined and cross-examined. Why is it that we are suddenly supposed to believe, without any examination, every word that this young man says just because he happens to be a naysayer? There are several disturbing aspects to Tommy Smith's story. Ed has published 38 photographs, but Tommy maintains that he knows only of the six fakes which are not among the 38. If Tommy knew Ed was conducting a hoax, why did he wait over two years before exposing it? At first, I didn't think it would get that big. I really didn't. And then, as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, I just said to myself, hey, uh, you know, if I go forward now, what proof do I have and why should people believe me? What is the real truth behind the Gulf Breeze sightings? Despite Ed Walter's claims to the contrary, there is considerable evidence that his photographs may be fakes. Some experts have called this picture a classic UFO photograph. However, reporter Mark Curtis demonstrated in one of his newscasts how it could have been faked. Using a large black backdrop, a lit UFO model, and an orange crepe paper cutout, we took our first exposure. 
Then, it was time for a second exposure on the same piece of film, focusing out over the road, just like Ed Walters did. I never faked a photograph. What I have photographed is absolutely genuine, in the skies, over our town, no question about it. Ed always told me that he'd go to the grave, that he would never admit to it being fake. Even with the Ed Waters controversy put aside, a tantalizing mystery remains. What are we to think of the hundreds of eyewitness accounts from Gulf Breeze residents who insist they have seen the same UFOs that were photographed by Ed Waters? We saw what we saw. And there is, uh, they'll never convince me or Charlie either that that object wasn't out over the bay at that time and that Ed photographed it that evening. What I saw was certainly not a small model made out of paper plates or any other small model. It was a major object. I still know what I saw and what I saw looked like Ed Walter's photographs. There's no doubt in my mind that what I saw looked exactly like what Ed Walters photographed. I don't see how he could have hoaxed what we saw over the bay. There's lots of objects flying around Gulf Breeze, and uh, it's, it's no surprise that some of them will tend to look like Ed's photographs. That doesn't make them alien spacecraft, and it doesn't make them the same object that Ed photographed. Those of us that have seen this thing know what we've seen. It does not matter what a naysayer says. A naysayer cannot believe it if he wants to. It does not change what we have seen and photographed. A visitor from outer space or a masterful hoax.